will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not plead to me. A forward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. Whoso privately slanders his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that hath a high look and a proud heart will not I suffer. My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. I will early destroy all the wicked of the land that I may cut off all the wicked doers from the city of the Lord. I will sing of mercy and judgment until, until the Lord will I sing. The Lord is in his holy temple, let all earth be silent before him. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Before we declare our Apostles' Creed, I want to tell you, I may not be the first, but I want to be among those that say, Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. Once you shout that out, Happy New Year, look to your neighbor, tell them Happy New Year. This is a new day. This is the day that the Lord hath made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. A day of brand new mercy. Yes, yes indeed. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now reverently and sincerely declared by the use of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead, and sitteth in heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from this you come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy of the Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I ask that Reverend Wilson will lead us to the throne of grace for our invocation this morning. still needs in our lives and for well, there's still need forgiveness and a reconciliation that what we need amongst ourselves and our families and our friends God we need that forgiveness as we celebrate the sacrificial life of the Lord Jesus Christ who died that we might have life and have it more abundantly forgive us help us to forgive one another let it go when we come to you, you forgive us and you don't remember it no more. Thank you for giving your son to pay a debt that we could not pay. A debt that paid everything and is going to pay. And we thank you, Jesus, our Savior, our healer, and our deliverer. And the fathers, we thank on that. Remember what you've done as we celebrate this day. Oh, 
sacrificial giving and communion, bread and wine. In some way, somehow, or another, God is refocused and your spirit is here with us to see and to understand, to know how great you are. What you've done and what you're going to do is in our lives to be more image in Christ Jesus. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for moving in us right now, even as we sit among each other. Let your presence be so strong, God. Change, change, great change. Change that life which is eternal in Christ Jesus. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Use everyone that shall stand before the people. God, you speak. Whether you be in the announcements, whatever it may be, God, asking you to move amongst us. And let your love rule and abide in our hearts by your spirit, God. By your spirit. We thank you for Pastor. Stand Lord. Continue to bless us all through and by him. And we ask all these blessings and the anointing from the choir. God, I just want to say the aroma of the anointing, the aroma of your love, the anointing that flows, God, let it be flowing, let it flow this morning. Lord, that we all are touched and blessed. And we give you all the honor and the glory. I have myself in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We do pray. But we all say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. Pastor, we will stand as we sing hymn number two. Hymn number two, Come Thou, my Almighty King.
to move throughout the world. Some woke up with their New Year's resolution on how to lose weight, how to be a better person. But how many know the church doesn't wait to January 1st to get it back together? Amen. Amen. Every time we show up, it's a new year for us. The altar presents another opportunity for a new you, creating in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Every time we come and pray together, we are asking God to transition us from a day of darkness and gloom back into the marvelous light. We're asking God to exchange the sin that we've had all week Give us joy for our morning. Give us beauty for our ashes. We don't wait 365 days to say, Lord, will you do it? Lord said, you can, I, I'll do it in the middle of the night. I'll do it in the morning. I'll do it in the evening. All you have to do is come and kneel and come together. I will hear your prayer and I will speak. I ask that everything that you have been thinking about, have been concerned, worried, have not given to prayer, I ask that you cast your cares upon him in this prayer. Ask God to give you a new year, a new outlook on life. And we do that. Excellent is thy name. We praise thee. We bless thee. We worship thee. We magnify your holy name. We take a moment to consider your presence, how it is so wonderful to us that we have access to your presence. That you have created this place of refuge that we call Holland Chapel and you have made it a place where you dwell. A house of bread. That at any time, Lord, when we're needing a new walk, we can come drink of the fountain. When we need a new talk, we can come hear your word that will transform our mind. We thank you of a place that we have gathered here that we can offer sacrifices, Lord. That here is a place where we can give ourselves and Give that which you have given to us. Return it to you with joy and thanksgiving. God, we say thank you just for that opportunity. And Lord, you have allowed us to come together because when we pray together and get on one accord, we can heal the land. We can remove the troubling on every side. We can cause healing to come forth. We can see people delivered, Lord. When we come together on one accord and pray that your will be done, I thank you for bringing us this far. 
don't take it for granted, granted God, because in the 365 days that have elapsed, some of us have been stricken with COVID and, and was met with a death diagnosis. We, not only that, we have been in surgery, God, and we had to sign on the dotted line that if by chance we die, that, that we don't hold it to the doctor's fault, God. We have placed ourselves at risk in 365 days. We have been driving on the roads and didn't know that we passed danger seen and unseen. God, we don't even know, God, that we passed some drunk driver. We don't even, we was at some time the stop point and there was a shooter there, God. There have been places in the school system where there have been shooters there, God, and we're still here. God, you've been sparing us. Every day you've been giving us grace and mercy. 365 days. God, we thank you. We praise you. We worship you. That means you've given us another opportunity to set it right. Another opportunity to forgive our neighbor. Another opportunity to let us to not be so bitter and take things so personally, God. You've given us another chance. Another year. We ask that you sanctify us. That you consecrate us. That you give us new eyes and new hands and new feet to walk with in this new year. And we pray, Lord, that that there will be a difference about us. That we won't reflect on what happened in the past, but that we'll move forward, but getting those things all behind us and reach it for that prize. Teach us again. Help us love again. Help us worship again. This is our prayer that we so faithfully pray and that we believe will happen. And we count it victory in Jesus' name. With hands held, with clapping and praising, we count it victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, continue to clap your hands. Thank you, Lord.
She has stripped it bare and thrown it away. Its branches are made white. Limit like a virgin girded with sackcloth for the husband of her youth. The grain offering and the drink offering have been cut off from the house of the Lord. The priests mourn who minister to the Lord. The field is wasted. The land mourns. For the grain is ruined and the new wine is dried up. The oil fails. Be ashamed, you farmers. Well, you vine dressers, for the wheat and the barley, because the harvest of the field has perished. The vine is dried up. The fig tree is withered. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree, all the trees of the field are withered. Surely joy has withered away from the sons of men. Gird yourselves and lament, you priest. Well, you who minister before the altar, come lie all night in sackcloth, you who minister to my God. For the grain offering and the drink offering are withheld from the house of your God. Consecrate a fast. Call the sacred assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. In order to bring a full conclusion, now skip to the second chapter, 25th verse. Last night, gave you hope from verse 25. There's some more hope in this passage. He says, so I will restore. And that was last night. I will restore to you the years that the swarming oak has eaten. You'll see the, the palmer worm, the canker worm. And you'll see those, but in this version, the swarming locust has eaten. The crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust. My great army which I sent among you, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Praise the name of your Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be put to shame. Then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God, and there is no other. My people shall never be put to shame. Here is the second part of some good news. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also my men servants and on my maid servants I will pour out my spirit in those days. I will draw my title from verse 2. The two words, hear this. Hear this. That ought to spark up your ears. It says, the teacher in kindergarten would say, now is the time to put on your what? Your Thinking caps. That was my, that's what they told me. <laughs> put on your thinking caps. Hey, Amen. I think maybe just the 80s, baby, that was what they said to us. <laughs> put on your thinking caps. Let us pray, gracious God. Speak to, speak to your people. Give us something, Lord. Give us what we need. If anything else, give us this day our daily bread. When you've done that, Lord, you have done what we have needed. In Jesus' name, amen. Actually, uh, I want to state again that it is because during the sermon, 
when I talked about spiritual enslavement. For those of you who weren't here, let me bring you up to speed. I talked about this, the significance of watch night service, especially for those that were slaves, those of our ancestors were enslaved, as they knew that that Frederick Douglass and other leaders was lobbying Abraham Lincoln to sign the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863. He declared that he would do that on the 1st of January. So instead of, as everyone else on New Year's Eve, instead of uh, when, Joseph, when John Wesley incorporated that in 1740 as a way to commit to God, it became very significant for the enslaved Africans as they were waiting and anticipating the day that when they exchanged their chains to freedom. They were looking for the opportunity they had been praying they had been investing. They had been telling their children, children to hold on. They had been telling them that, that I know you've been beat, baby, but it won't be this always. They were the first that understood that trouble won't last always. They were the ones that were singing in the cotton fields, swinging low, and all of those Negro spirituals that came at a time that their bodies were enslaved. And my wife said, as we're driving, she said, isn't it interesting that as they were waiting to be freed, their bodies were enslaved, but their spirits were in tune to God. Mm -hmm. Their bodies being mangled and hung and lynched and beaten, their bodies being torn from their babies and sold, all of that should have ripped the core out of every enslaved mother and father when they were torn apart and had to watch heinous things that happened in their sight. And it's, it's already all rated that I can't even list because we have children here. But you all know stories and heard stories of, of the horrific things that happened and they did not have control over their bodies, but they were close to God than they had ever been. These people that couldn't read sometimes and couldn't write the English language still knew how to call on God's presence. People that came over that never was introduced to a Bible, but when they heard at the Exodus story of there was some slaves that were free, it began a light bulb that says that how dare these people preach it to us and we know of a time that we shall be free and they hold on to the word of God that was sent to them through masters. Isn't that strange how even though they're looking at a master that's hurting them, they're still able to discern the word of God spoken to them even if it's given to them by their abusers. Can't you think about that? Somebody beating you and still giving you the word of God. And in the midst of that, they were able to discern that I know that this ain't going to always be. Because what they're saying signals to me that there will be a day of freedom. My wife, we talked about that on the ride home. And I, and I said to you all, and as she wanted me to expound upon it, but today, we're supposed to be celebrating freedom. But we're still really in a watch night. Because we're spiritually enslaved. Our bodies is not enslaved. We can go where we want to go. We can eat what we want to eat. We can live where we want to live. But spiritually, together we are not as close and in tune in God as they were. These people, they would collect around what they call brush harbors. 
I couldn't understand why when I was at Union Grove, they said we used to be called a brush harbor. And as I studied, here was places where they hide because there were there were like laws in Georgia that said that black folk couldn't preach, that you couldn't even congregate together. People died just trying to hear the word of God. You hear what I'm saying? They had to make coded language in the singing just to keep themselves in tune with the spirit of God. And nowadays. We can't remember words of a hymn. It's not the choir's fault. It's not the musician's fault. It's because all of us collectively have been spiritually bound. We still got to tell you where to turn to for blessed assurance. It's going to be deep. But we're going to move on. All right. We're still trying to get folks to leave it at the altar. We're spiritually enslaved in bondage. We're still on watch night waiting for the freedom eve, the freedom day. The reason why Joel is so significant because he was dealing with people that their bodies was free from Egypt but they had been spiritually enslaved over time. I want to show you that and I'm going to get out your way. In Joel's time they had received calamity in the form of locusts and the locust was eating up everything. And if you all know anything about history of locusts, when they come and swarm, they can wipe out crops and everything else. These locusts took over all of Israel, destroying the crops. The animals did not have anything to eat, so, so everything was, mal was malnourished. Everything was being destroyed. And Joel sees this as an opportunity and says, maybe it's because we're being punished. Maybe it's because we have fallen away from God. And the reason why Joel knows this, because this is what he tells them. He has to tell the priest, gird yourselves up and lament. He has to tell the people, you need to have a sacred assembly and pray. Now, why is that telling that they're spiritually enslaved? Because why should a prophet have to tell the priest when to pray and cry? Y'all see what I'm saying? Why does this man of God single-handedly by himself have to tell the church, you need to get together and pray? That's because that the people can't even discern what is a calamity. We get to the point when we can't discern what is destruction. And so I talked about it last night that even now that we're dealing with people still carrying guns in our schools. We're still dealing with the threat of nations that, that we have tensions with China. We're still dealing with the Supreme Court that will overturn abortion rights. And all of this is going on and while the church does not have a discerning voice, we have not spoke up. We don't because we don't even know what's going on. We're so used to calamity and destruction that we just figure it is what it is. We have become swallowed up and we've become complacent and we have become numb because every time we see a killing on the street in Durham and we see black on black crime, we see gangs, we see all of this happening around us and we're still okay with shopping, we're still okay with eating and it doesn't bother us, it doesn't make us stay up at night, it doesn't call for a prayer, nobody has called me and said, Pastor, we need to pray, I've never heard someone come to me and say, Pastor, we need to fast because we have been complacent and spiritually bound. I can't. 
Paul told, he talks to the people, he even talks to the elders. He said, have y'all seen this before? Elders, I call upon you right now. Haven't you seen days like this of calamity and judgment? You've seen the Cold War, you've been in the, you've seen depression, you've seen things where we didn't have. We need your voice. This is what Joel offers as a prescription for this. I need you to hear this. I need you to hear this. He says in verse 13, 13 of chapter 1, he says, I'm going to talk to the priest. All the priests in here, Reverend Cozy Vaughn, Reverend Brown Roberts, Reverend Wilson, Brother Lunsford, Pastor Charles Matthews, Reverend Paul. He tells the priest, this is the prescription that's going to be for this year, intertwined with what we're going to do. Watch me. He says, lament. I need you to wail. I need you to cry. You've been given instructions. He says, I need, you know, I need you to go on your face and cry. Crying is not only of sorrow, but cry is also a war cry. Crying begins a sign. It begins, it begins uniting people to move forward. He says, I need you to cry. They're dealing with inflation. They're dealing with trying to get a good interest rate on, on what they're doing. They're paying so much for food. He says, they're dealing with judgment. And why they're dealing with calamity? The priest, I need you to cry so you can fix it. So we can have some grain in the house. The priest were first in line. We're going to be crying. We're going to be wailing. We're going to be lamenting. He says, here's the next thing. He says, for the assembly, he says, he says, now consecrate a fast. That's the second thing. He says, a consecrated fast. This is, this is going to be some good things for us. It's going to help us. Consecrated fast. He says, I need you to empty out. He says, he says, you've been full on everything else. He says, but when I get ready to bless you in this new season, I need you to empty. I need you to empty of everything that you have been relying on, those resources. I want you to empty on the food that you have been taking that have, that have helped cushion you and help make you feel okay when you know that things are going wrong because that's how we do to make sure we feel okay that we'll go eat something if, if things are not going right. He says, no, I want you to start fasting. Hollis is on due for fast. He says, gather the elders. That's what we're going to do, gather the elders. And this is where he says, and all the inhabitants of the land, God told me to tell you, he says, stop just calling church folk. He says, stop just calling the people that are members. He said, I want you to make a call to all the inhabitants of the land. He says, start making your invitation known to Chatham County. Start making your, your, your interest known to Apex. He says, no longer the people on this road should never not know what's going on in this house, but they should be invited because they too are in dealing with calamity and judgment, and they too need to come and hear the word of God. He says, call all of the inhabitants. And he says, when you get all of them, he says, together, I want you, in verse 14, to all cry. Yeah. All cry. He says, I want you to wail. This messed me up because I, I said, Lord, this is a new day. I just, we just want to just run up and down and, and, and just bless and just high five. He says, I'm going to do that. I told you last night what I'm going to do. But in the meantime, what I need you to do now is to prepare yourself and to prepare this land. They're dealing with calamity out there. And they're waiting for us to have a voice. And this is what he's going to do. He says, in verse 28, and it shall come to pass, if you do these things that I have designed, if, if your priest will cry out and lament, 
if you if you call the fast and gather the assembly, and you call all of them, he said, from the children and the older, you come all together. He said, this is the freebie that I'm going to do. It'll come to pass that I will pour out my spirit. I'm 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 coming to a close, and I want you to know that. That, that was heavy, but there on the opposite side, there is some good news for us. For those of us that understand that, that even in judgment, there is still hope. That, that even in pain, there is still joy that we can hold on to. He says, it, it, I will pour out my spirit. Some of you had other spirits. You had spirits that have been lurking around you. He says, that in this season, I will pour out my spirit. Not anybody else. Not, not those that you've been hanging around. Not the family members. Not the issues that you've been carrying since a little child. He says, I will pour out my spirit. Somebody say, my spirit. And he says, this is what I'm going to do when I pour out my spirit. I'm not just going to pour it out on hollow. Because of your sacrifice, I'm going to pour it out on all flesh. Can't you see how a blessing hollow can do by being a sacrifice, standing in the gap that not only will God bless us, but, but those we come in contact with, those that never declare Jesus is Lord, God will start touching them and pouring out his spirit upon them. That's the day that Jesus has been waiting on for us to not only just affect each other, but to affect everyone we come in contact with. I'm looking for a day that you're pumping gas and the person next to you says, hey, dude, something about what's going on makes me want to talk to you. Can I tell you a story when I was at Carolina, I'm a freshman, and I and I remember I went to bed, Brother Brogan, I went to bed and I had a vision, I had a vision that my roommate was fighting demons. He was the roommate across the hall. I just met him. I just met him, and, and, and we had became good friends, but things was going wrong, and I, I had this bad dream. I woke up at freshman year, I'm, I'm 19 years old, and I had this bad dream that he's being killed by like these demons, and I woke up not knowing what to say. He comes to class, comes down to his room, I'm waiting for him, and I see him, and I, I say, I, I want to talk to you. We have not had a conversation. He says, I think I know what you're going to say to me. He says, I need to get myself together. We have not had a conversation. We have not put out a Bible. He doesn't go to church. But he, he says something was a Christ. And he says, he says, I know that. He says, I, I just been in and out with women. He says, I've been drinking. He just started confessing. And I've been just doing things. He says, I, I just need to get myself together. We prayed right then. I was not ordained. I did not have no minister behind my name. But I know that when he says he will pour his spirit on all flesh, he's already tested me. So I already know what's going to happen if you let him pour your spirit on you. I went home. Went to see some friends. When I came home on college in summer, met a guy on the corner and said, hey, how you doing? Wasn't trying to preach. He came up to me and said, hey man, look, listen, I won't try to get back to school. I, I said, well, I, I'm not, I didn't say anything. He says, I know, but I'm telling you, I want to get back to school. I want to get my life together. And I'm telling you that this is a time that's going to happen in the church that when you're walking, people will come and confess to you. People will come up to you and say, I want to get my life together. What you have is what I want. This is what it's going to look like. I'm finished. I'm going to pull out, I'm going to part my spirit on his sons and daughters. Little Ray Ray going to be playing toys. Ain't going to say thank you, Jesus. The reason why I know because I heard Taylor do that. He said, thank you, Jesus. We was riding down the street and and he scared me half to death 
He said, get the car. Oh, I almost wrecked the car. He said, that Jesus, that's what? He had saw the tempest scene in somebody's front yard. But it's dead in the dead. He said, because that's what's going to happen, that, that, that even your sons, your daughters who had it, you have thought that it's going to take a long time to give the word of God. They'll be saying, Daddy, Mommy, I pray. You've already seen it. Your sons, your daughters. Because we need a prophet in kindergarten. You hear what I'm saying? Those five and six year olds know exactly what's going on. We need prophets in kindergarten. We need evangelists in the middle school. That's right. We need pastors in high school. Come on, come on. Joel is saying to us, if you and the church are not going to do it, mm -hmm. I'm going to keep going down to the generations. Mm -hmm. If you're not going to take heed, I'm just going to pour out my spirit on all of those that will receive it. And I will still save this world. I will still bless you. That's how much God loves you. That even if you don't want to listen, he'll raise up your children and your children's children. And he'll keep doing it until someone says, I will make a sacrifice. Will we stand over the building? Be intentional that in this season you will see pastor bring the lament, the fasting, the prayer for all of us to cry out. I believe God has something for us. God is blessing us. Let's don't miss out on what's about to happen. He's been blessing us. Now he's about to bless the community. He's about to bless the community. He's going to bless this community. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I, I just pray that you begin adding, us, adding to us significantly. Thank you already, God, for bringing back folks. We thank you, God, for restoring the family. We thank you, God, for restoring this church, Lord. And, and I thank you for the testimonies and, and things that are happening, God. That's happening because of your spirit, not because of me and not because of us. We have not done anything. All we're doing is being conduits of your grace. We pray that you continue to wrap your arms around us and expand us. Now, Lord, we pray that you give us rest on today. On this New Year's Day, God. And let us reflect on how you're going to do things in this new year. But I pray that you continue to expand our anointing, expand the members here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And if there's anyone here while you're standing that wants to be a part, you may, I, you don't know, I, I, I wish I could share the excitement. I don't want anyone to leave here that says, hey, I want to restore my place in Holland. I want to be an active member. You can come and we can receive you back full-fledged as, as if nothing happened. We are forgetting what happened on yesterday. If you want to say, I want to make a declaration that I want to be active. I want to be involved. I want you to come. I want you to come. If, if you are not a member and you say, I want to be a member, I've been visiting, but I want to be a member, I want to give you that right hand of fellowship. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. 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 Amen.
rejoice. We gotta rejoice. I told him I want your full name so we can make sure we know him fully. But Mr. Kevin Ricardo Roberts has declared he wants to be a member of the college chapter. Come on, you want to rejoice? Love, 
Breathe on him with the spirit of God in the name of Jesus. I need y'all praying. Breathe in him, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God. Oh God, right now, burst in him, God. Burst it, God, in the name of Jesus. Drink him, oh God. Anoint him to the head, to the sole of his feet, God. Anoint him, God, as you did Aaron, the priest, God. Anoint him in the name of Jesus, God. To speak things in the atmosphere. Anoint him as a priest, God. Anoint him, God. Oh God, touch his hands, God. Touch his feet, God, with peace, God. Oh God, surround him with truth, God. Cover his backside, God. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we pray. We thank you, Lord. We thank you so much. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We welcome you. Like I said, we're going to have a formal introduction. We just want to thank you. Lord. God bless you. And yeah, we're going to take good care of you. We're going to do that. Amen. If anyone has sinned, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the perpetuation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Wherefore, ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy way, draw near with faith, and take the holy sacrament to your comfort, and devoutly kneeling, and some devoutly sitting, make your humble confession of Almighty God. Reverend Wilson will start our general, general confession. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, Father this Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and reveal our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time most previously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and the indignation against us, we do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. For members of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that were hearts of repentance and true faith turn unto thee. Have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We collect all Almighty God, God, God us from all our hearts are open, open, all desires known, and for whom those secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit. That we may perfectly love thee and worthy may it by the holy name, the Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy holy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may live and grow thereby, and that being washed through his most precious blood, we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. 
who made there by his oblation of himself, once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute in his holy gospel command us to continue in perpetual memory of this precious death until this coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these, thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. When the same night he is betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for thee for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Body of my Lord Jesus, preserve that body and soul to everlasting life. I take and eat the remembrance that you died for me, and I feed on you in my heart, my faith, with thanksgiving. The cup that you gave the disciples after supper also represent to us the blood shed on Calvary's cross. The blood that covers our sin. I take and drink and remember that you died for me on Calvary's cross. Take and eat. Remember that Christ died for you. Be on him in thy heart. Thy faith for thanksgiving. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ will shed for thee, preserve thy soul and body for everlasting life. Our clergy drink and be thankful. Together it is very meet, right, and our bounding duty. We should at all time give thanks to the O Lord, Holy God, Almighty, Everlasting God. Therefore, what of angels, our angels, all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Amen. Do not have um, a cup, please do so. I, I wave your hand if you would like to participate. This is open it says if anyone has sent. This is open for anyone who would like to participate. As you'll see, we're already enacting what Joel said to call the assembly, consecrate. This is what we're doing as a body of believers. A little moment to get to the uh, the top part. It's a little tricky. Yeah. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy soul and body unto everlasting life. Take and eat, and feed on Him, and be thankful. And feed on Him in the heart by faith for Thanksgiving. The blood of our Lord Jesus that preserved thy soul and body into everlasting life. Drink now and be thankful. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, is us already 
doing what Joel has asked us to do. We're consecrating his assembly together. <clears throat> Let us now recite together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thy humble servants desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merit and death of thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and thy whole church may obtain the remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we offer and present to thee, O Lord, our souls and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Everyone said, Amen. 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 If we would please stand, we would... Glory Celsius, glory be to God on high, on earth peace, goodwill toward men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory, O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Thou that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takes away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, our most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. You may have your seats as we prepare for our benediction. Before you leave, if you do not have an envelope to please make sure that you drop an offering. God has still been wonderful to us because we have been focusing on the right things. And God is still being, is, is expanding us financially and adding to us. And I just thank God. So I pray that if you don't have an envelope, please designate. We want to be accountable for every penny that we receive. Amen. Amen. And we want you to know how we are spending it. We're transparent here. And we want to make sure you know that where your brain and your offering is going to is that we're making sure that it grows this kingdom and it does some good. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for the gifts that everyone has brought to you. In the days of Joel, God, everything was dried up. They didn't even have an offering to bring to the temple. And for us, even with calamity all around us, you still have given us an opportunity to give. And I pray that what we give is a personal confession between you and them. Let no one else dictate their amount dictate how and when but I pray it be a spiritual confession that they do this unto you and that we God will be
good stewards of what has been presented to us and that they will be blessed. They will be satisfied. They will be plenteous. I pray that some that are praying, God, for, for refinancing of things, God, make that a way for them. God, I pray that some have student loans. God, begin delivering student loans. Begin wiping out loans, God. I pray, God, that we'll see those manifestations that you have promised us being blessed in the fields and coming and going. Let us see that in our time. This is our prayer. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Let us sing. Let us sing. Bless you, may heaven smile.